What is up everybody? This is Michael File Sage checking in here today. I hope you guys are doing well. Uh, so today I wanted to talk about something that I've been dealing with and something that I know a lot of people have also dealt with and that is the issue of dirty grains causing contamination. Um, now a lot of people I feel are under the impression that um, once you sterilize something in a pressure cooker or in an autoclave, then you pretty much you know killed everything, right? And the fact of the matter is that's not really true. It's not really true unless you do like a 24 hour run, uh, you're not gonna kill everything. You know, but for our purposes in the hobby and with relatively clean grains, right? Not so dirty or anything like that, just normal grains, we can get away with it. But when, you, when your grains are getting dirtier and dirtier and dirtier, right? Then you're just gonna increase your chance of having contamination. And in my case, I wanna, I've been dealing with that. Uh, with a bag of rye, a 55 pound bag of rye that I bought back in October from a feed, uh, feed store. And it was going well for a while, but then eventually moss started coming up. And because I've had it for a while, because I don't go through grains too fast, because of the fact that I run shoe boxes, even though I run a lot of shoe boxes, you know, it's it's a lot less than running a lot of monotubs, right? Uh, so I, I had this bag of grain around and it just, it was just getting worse and worse and worse. And first it wasn't that big of an issue. You know, I would make spawn and it would work. And then eventually I started getting random contaminations from clean cultures and I always figured, okay, maybe it's just my sterile technique. And then, you know, fast forward a couple of weeks later and I'm at the point, I was at the point where every single one, for, for whatever reason, nothing has changed in my process or anything will get some kind of contamination after the second shake where it'll stop growing, where it'll grow all weird and thick, right? Um, or it'll just be really, really slow where I could see visibly see wet rot, right? Like this, clean culture, but see that? Full of bacteria, the yellow stuff, yeah. So, and over here, here are some core lovers. Clean cultures somebody sent me. Uh, this is almost a month in colonization. Usually it takes two weeks for me to be fully colonized or less, right? And you can see it's still not fully colonized and mycelium is coming on thick. These are really tough to break up. And you can, I don't know if you can see the wet rod here, but, but yeah, th basically there's definitely contamination going on. You know, they take forever. Here's another one, take forever, right? And they look normal. They look normal, but they are not in practice. And here's what happened when I spawned one of those cultures, right? I got a bunch of those core lover cultures because I got a bunch of core lover cultures sent. And over here, you can see it looks normal, right? Now I applied a casing layer, as you guys have known. By the way, guys, um, one of my mentorship students told me that they started applying a casing layer and their yields have gone way up. Their flushes have gone way better. You know who you are. Thanks for letting me know. So yeah, it really does work very, very well. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to get into that later, maybe. But yeah, this is this is one of the core lover cultures that somebody sent me. It's about a week in colonization, pretty much fully colonized, cased it two days ago. And lo and behold, we have Trichoderma. Now, this is from another dirty culture. Now, before I spawned it, I could tell from the way the mycelium looked that it was definitely contaminated in some some form. There were some metabolites, right? Uh, check out my video all about metabolites. You'll see a tub there. And it sort of looked like that. Not as intense, but it did look quite a bit like that. Uh, just in the way the mycelium was sort of fluffy and oily looking, I guess you could say. Um, so yeah, we got trike here, right? And then here's another one. Uh, Mexican grass lovers, okay, this guy's okay still. This guy's okay still. But these were all made from the dirty grains, right? This right here is um, subtropicalis. And I just unfortunately discovered a spot of trike this morning which is a real bummer. So I'm gonna have to go back and uh, make make some cultures there. And also we got some bispos. Okay, the bispos are okay, right? So, you know, it's, uh, it's just not good. I don't have much hope for these guys, unfortunately. So yeah, don't mess around with dirty grains. If you have insects, if you have lots of dung, it's just full of bacteria and other things that you really don't want in your grains. And it will really mess up your grow. Uh, sterilization is not going to, you know, pressure cooking it is not going to take care of like super dirty grains like that. You you don't want to be wasting your cultures in time. Um, so, so what I've done is, 
here's my recommendation if you are unsure or if you're new and you don't want to invest in a big bag of grains or anything like that um what you can do what i recommend is going with brown rice brown rice in my opinion is the best grain the only reason i don't use it much is because it's more expensive because it's for human consumption right but if i could i would always use brown rice for various reasons it's, it's the most nutritious grain as far as i'm aware uh it's very easily accessible uh it doesn't have endospores uh so it's clean it's much it's literally cleaner just by virtue of not having endospores it's cleaner so you don't even have to pressure cook it uh even though you I recommend that you do anyways and get a pressure cooker or an instant pot which by the way I heard that is going bankrupt the company for instant pot so if you guys still haven't picked up an instant pot you probably should <laughs> free advertisement for them there um and yeah lots of inoculation points very nutritious as I said so it's just a fantastic way to do it as long as you prepare it right so I've gone to brown rice um again and yeah, so this is gonna, I'm, you know, I feel secure in the fact that I have clean grains and things will go much better as long as my culture and my sterile technique is up to the game. You know, it's not gonna randomly start contaminating. All right, guys, so I was gonna end the video there, but then I was like, oh yeah, you know what? I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the casing layer and sort of address a comment that I had on my casing layer video um, that I recently uploaded. And that person said, uh, they use a top layer and, you know, just use a top layer and you'll have good results. Well, I used to use top layers all the time and top layers, uh, never, I never had the benefits of casing layer with just a top layer. And this is why I say the difference with a casing layer. And I make that distinction is because at least with the 50, 50 plus, uh, style casing layers, which is 50% vermiculite, 50% peat moss, uh, or some combination of those. This is actually closer to 70-30 because I use Jiffy Mix and that's sort of their formulation. And then it's pH adjusted to be around eight, right? And what that does is it, it stops, well, it helps stop mold growing on the casing layer with the higher pH, but it also helps uh, stop or slow down mycelium colonizing the casing layer as well. Now you don't want your casing layer really to be fully colonized because the whole point of a casing layer, right, is to protect the mycelium from the elements. It's like clothes for the mycelium so it doesn't freeze, so to speak, you know, to stretch the metaphor a bit. Um, so you don't want it to be fully colonized because then you're stuck with the same problem again. Okay, so that's the fruiting surface and the fruiting surface is the raw mycelium. It's not covered, it's dry, it's not good fruiting conditions. But if the mycelium is below the casing layer because it can't really colonize it too well, then that means that the fruiting surface is actually protected. And that means in our case, it means it's nice and moist, right? Nice and moist, and that's the way they like it. Uh, so that's why I'm having really good success. That's why it works really well for avoiding, completely avoiding, essentially completely avoiding side pins and bottle pins. That's what, that's the main difference, right? And also not to mention the peat moss and the vermiculite mix is better than just straight core at retaining moisture. And you could sort of soak that through and thus maintain better surface conditions overall for also a longer period of time. So anyways, guys, that's the video for today. I hope you guys found it helpful. What's important is that you understand that dirty grains do have an influence, right? Pressure cooking doesn't really kill everything. Um, it can also bloom later on because all the crap is still there. You, you know, you just like made it inert for a second, but it, it'll come back. And the dirtier the grains, the higher the likelihood of contamination blooming later on. And recently, my growths that actually make it past the colonization stage into the fruiting stage have been getting contaminated immediately after or during the first flush, which usually never happens to me on core-only grows with clean spawn. Usually, such tubs have no issues flushing for months. This is because as the grains have gotten dirtier, the mycelium also needs to spend more energy to fight the contamination throughout the growing process. Now add to that that your mycelium will naturally be weakened after a flush due to expending a lot of energy to fruit, which makes it a prime time for any contamination to bear its head. This becomes compounded with the higher contamination load brought on by the dirty grains, and as a result, you will be drastically increasing your chances of contamination by using unclean grains. And the more things that you don't want are in there, the more things you have, the higher the likelihood you have of those things sort of blooming again and you know contaminating your spawn okay yeah, guys that's the video i hope you guys have a great day or night michael file sage checking out for now
Thank you.